What's up YouTube? Today the saga continues. So as you guys might may or may not know, the Jeep has this misfiring problem. It's cylinder three misfire. It gets better as I accelerate and it's the worst when I'm idling and just under load, usually in first and second gear. I've consulted lots of the forums, Facebook groups, friends, and done a bunch of tests. I did compression test, it was completely normal, all within range. I did a fuel pressure test, which is in a previous video. Looks like it's pretty normal. The gauge oscillates a little bit, but other than, some people say it's normal, some people say it's not normal. I'm not really sure, I'm gonna just go with it for now. Someone recommended doing a Noid light test to see the wiring of the injectors. I think that's a great idea. That's something we'll make a future video on. Some others suggested changing the coil pack. So that, that's what I have right here with me. I have a brand new coil pack. The link will be in the description below. Uh, the coil pack that's currently on the Jeep uh, has been on the Jeep for 250,000 miles, so I'm not upset about replacing this part regardless. Uh, another thing that many people have suggested is the heat soaking issue, which is a problem that happens with these, two th these TJs. Uh, the injector number three gets a lot of the exhaust heat after you park the car for a little while. So then when you restart the car, you actually get this vapor locking issue where you're getting rough idles and cylinder three misfiring. The treatment for that is going to be one of these, which is found on Amazon. It's $10, kind of seems expensive for a little piece of insulation like this. I don't think that's my problem just because I, I feel like I've had the heat soaking issue in the past and it doesn't quite seem like that. It's misfiring regardless of the cycle. So right now we're going to go ahead and install the coil and then afterwards I'm going to go ahead and install this piece too. But I'm, I'm mostly hoping that it resolves itself once I replace the coil. So changing out the coil is pretty simple. I think the hardest part with the job is actually disconnecting that stock connector in the back. If you've never touched your coil before, it's probably not going to want to come undone too easily. So what you're going to need is a 13 millimeter socket. I like an extension. I'm not sure this looks like 10 or 12 inch, something along those lines. And also a ratchet head. You're gonna go ahead and remove the four screws holding it in, disconnect the clip, and just replace it. All right, so let's just put on some gloves and let's get to work. All right, we're gonna start off with the 13 millimeter four, uh, screws. There's four total, two in the front, two in the rear. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and wiggle the coil, the original one, out of its place. And now that we've done so, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the connector on the rear. Ah. It's such a pain in the ass. Flathead screwdriver, like so. To try to pry out open the red tab. You're gonna wanna pull the red tab towards yourself. Now, once you have your wire disconnected, go ahead and try to finesse this guy out of here. Out with the old, not too shabby for having 256,000 miles on it. And in with the new, looks like there's some sort of epoxy on the inside, looks pretty good. They look pretty much identical. Now that you have the old unit removed, go ahead and put the new one in. What I did was I just visually inspected to see that all of the springs are, are all they all are in place, none of them have fallen out. All right, let's go ahead and wiggle it in. Go ahead and just thread all of the four screws back into place. Make sure you start it off by hand.
So we went ahead and replaced it. Job takes about 10 minutes. The most annoying part is actually just removing that clip, but once you get past that, it's all downhill. So now we're gonna go ahead and start the Jeep and hope that it doesn't give us the misfiring issue. It's been about three weeks since we've started this Jeep, so we'll see what happens. Step one, getting into the Jeep. All right, let's hope for the best here. Fired up kind of quickly. All right guys, so unfortunately the coil did not fix our problem. I tried tampering and fiddling with the different wiring and I came to the conclusion that it's probably the wiring for the injector. Now what I did was I placed my fingers on each of the injectors as the car was running and I noticed that the pulses on the injector number three weren't as strong as the pulses on the other injectors. So I'm, I have a feeling that something with the wires, maybe it's old, it's not getting good signal. So now I need to figure out how to test that and I kind of mentioned it at the beginning of the video. It's with a Noid light tester. So we're going to go ahead, I'll do this in another video just so in the meantime I can get some advice. Don't think I can put any more time to this today. Uh, what I'll do is in another video I'll get a Noid light tester from AutoZone or any of the local auto parts stores and I'll go ahead and I'll connect it to see how strong of pulses I'm actually getting and compare them among the different injectors. Thank you guys for watching. Please give, give me all the comments and suggestions you have to offer. I definitely need help doing this one. I want to avoid uh, doing things like putting a new coil pack and all those things. Um, I caved in with the coil pack. I guess next up could be a crank position sensor. Who knows? Let's see here. Thank you for all your help. Thanks for tuning in. Please let me know if, if you have any suggestions. Thank you.